All right. <sighs> Apologies for the wait. I completely got my head turned around. For some reason in my mind, eight o'clock was what stuck in my head. I don't know why it's never been eight o'clock. It's always been seven. So I don't know why my brain decided to do that to me, but it did. So um, I just finished up shooting a video and then checked my phone and was like, oh crap. <laughs> oh damn. Um, did I watch this other clips? Yeah. Oh geez. I forgot that like that happened in the interim. That happened uh, a while ago. Yes, I did watch the eclipse. It was a wonderfully surreal experience. Um, cause I, I happen to live in the path of totality. So there were so many people drove up here. It literally tripled the population of the town. Um, how many people came up here to see it where, where I am. And I just got to step us on my front door. And like, we, we were in such a, um, such a totality area that like for about 60 seconds, you could actually look at the thing without the protective glasses on. It was astounding. Oh, yeah, it was really, really cool. <laughs> so it's one of those things that like I could go on about it, but there's nothing that I can say that will properly bring across the experience of being there for it. Uh, can you explain what canon means in Doctor Who? Super confusing. Okay, well... It's because Doctor Who exists um, at both extremes. You can make arguments either that everything is canon or that nothing is canon and both arguments will have equal validity. The way that I approach it is that the show is canon. In the case of anything contradicting anything else, the show trumps everything. So like if there's an audiobook or a comic or a novel out there that says one thing, but then the show does something that contradicts it, tough. That other thing obviously can't be canon because the show did something else. Now, the way certain showrunners, like I think Moffat said, it, like it, the show can't have canon. It has time travel with a malleable um, uh, version of what happens to time. Things can change. So if something seems non-canon or is paradoxical or uh, inconsistent, well, time travel, what can you do? It's a little blase, but it, it can kind of work. That's sort of the everything is canon approach. Um, they're remaking the Wolfman again. Okay, whatever. Um, thanks for the fright of my life. I had a neighbor leaving my building and I heard you exasperatedly sigh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gamer Jamie. Oh, I'm knocking, knocking this off. Whoops. And, oh, I got to stop the, the backings of the pin from going down my chest. I like to think it's Schrodinger's cannon. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. That's, that's not a, not a bad way to, to put it. Um, yes, Ms. Wicked Wolf, I played the original uh, Nintendo and I uh, had the the game cartridges that was the duel of original Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt. One of the best first Doctor books reveals that the universe is changed every time the Doctor leaves the TARDIS due to chaos theory. Huh. Interesting. I mean, if you adopt that, then that's the everything is canon version of things. On the topic of canon... Uh, does it look like Star Trek is taking the Schrodinger's canon path now? I am not familiar enough with Star Trek canon. I have not even seen all the shows. Like, there's some shows in Star Trek I haven't seen at all, much less all of them. Um, and granted, I've got holes in my Doctor Who knowledge as well, but I've got a lot of holes in my Star Trek knowledge. I don't feel like I'm a good person to ask about the state of Star Trek's canon, uh, to be completely honest. Hypno Amber, thank you very much for the super chat. I greatly appreciate it. And a reminder 
that um, a super chat guarantees that I will see your comment or question and you get a little heart of appreciation from me. Just here to share the love from Burlesque Show Earnings. Stay glittery. Hell yeah! I, I am here for my burly siblings. Power, power to burlesque performers. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, that's why the TARDIS has the scanner and chameleon circuit so a Time Lord can travel without interfering, only observing. <laughs> no. I mean, they're there so the Time Lord doesn't make a fuss, but like... I think that's much more about preserving the Time Lord than preserving the timeline, if that makes sense. Uh, um, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much did you want to shoot the dog? Oh, the one from Duck Hunt? I don't know. Probably depended on my mood. <laughs> Switches control your bottoms of your Shive pins. Ah, good grief. They canceled Lower, Lower Decks. I heard that, Jen. I know Jesse is not happy about that. Will I be covering the cast report in the UK? Nope. Nope, old web shooter. I will not. I do not want to be that depressed. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, skip that one. Not that it isn't important to realize all the immense problems with that thing and the fact that Last I checked, Labor was also backing it, is abhorrent and atrocious, and I don't have the spoons to, in, to look into it enough to do a video. And I don't want to get as depressed as it would make me to do so. So I can think back to how much it bummed me out when I did the transgenocide video last year. I'm not going to say I'm never going to do something of that nature again, but that took a lot. That took a lot out of me. And I really don't want to. I really don't want to. I mean, might I eventually? Maybe. I don't know. I don't want to, though. I really don't. I looked at the wrong channel. thought you were posting the live stream channel notifications was for your future of streaming. Oh, ha <laughs> ha. Uh, don't worry about a 255. You'll 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 get in on them. Uh, you'll get in on them later. Uh, for people who are confused by that, um, I have a video coming out uh, later this month about the status of streaming like services like Netflix and uh, Disney and whatnot, and talking about the not so great future of those things. And um, so I think that confused uh, some folks because that video is in early access on the Patreon. I've ever played Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I was alive in the 90s. Uh, you're not suggesting that the Time Lords themselves don't want 100% stick to their non-interference rule at all time? Looks away from the Time War. I, I might, I might possibly be suggesting that. Uh, vacuum of comments. Uh, that, that might, might just maybe, maybe, that might just maybe be the case. I don't know why this has become Marlon Brando, but uh, I'm rolling with it. Quantum Leap is canceled too. I didn't realize that had more than a season. Did it? It had a second season, right? I don't even know. Don't know it, Ms. Ms. Wicked Wolf, or if I know it, I don't know that I know it. Would love a TARDIS swimming pool story one day. It's mentioned so much. <laughs> It got a it got a mention in a classic era show that I watched uh, recently with Paradise Towers because one of the reasons they're going to Paradise Towers is because Mel wants the pool, but the TARDIS doesn't have a pool at that point because the Doctor ejected it because it was leaking. <laughs> uh, obviously, it gets reinstalled later because we know the Eleventh Doctor makes reference to it, but still, uh, Family Guy is streaming on Disney Plus, yeah, which is slightly surreal. Uh, I have no intention of catching up on Family Guy. <laughs> That's, uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. Posted one question late. Give me a pass or should I delete or post in chat? Um, uh, let me look at it. Give me a second. Um, Give, given the nature of what happened, I'll, I'll let it slide. 255. Don't put any more, though. It would just have it be the one. 
Have you ever seen Aquamarine? It always makes it feel like summer. I have not ever seen that movie. What are my thoughts on Treasure Planet? Deeply underrated. Great movie. Of course, I'm also a sucker for Treasure Island just as a story. I don't think I've ever seen a version of Treasure Island I didn't get some enjoyment out of it. Whether it's like uh, the old, I think it was Disney, live action Disney one, like old, like 60s, 50s, 60s. Um, whether it's whether it's that or whether it's the miniseries with Susie Izzard or whether it is Treasure Planet, uh, whether it is the Muppet Treasure Island. I just like Treasure Island. I just do. I like it. It's a fun story. Uh, we see this, the pool in the invasion of time. I have not gotten to that one, old web shooter. That is one of the ones that is, uh, I have a, there's a lot of four that I haven't seen, which in my defense, there is a lot of number four stories when it comes to Doctor Who in particular. So yeah, thoughts on the Ted movies? I only saw the first one. It was fine. It was fine. <laughs> Uh, ever see any of the original The Tomorrow People series in the 70s? Nope. I know it existed. I've heard the name because I have um, friends uh, who are older than me who uh, who have brought it up or mentioned it or say that they like it. I've never seen it. What did I think of Paradise Towers? Well, um, my full review is up in the break room of Geeks, which is my secondary channel. Short version, I liked it. It kind of falls apart at the very end, largely because of the villain, but like, I like it. It's, it's, it's pretty good. It's fun. I just finished watching The Thick of It, and I now can't stop imagining Peter Cavaldi's doctor abusing Nardle in a Malcolm-style verbal swear tsunami. I have never seen a full episode of The Thick of It. I have seen In the Loop, which is the movie uh, continuation of it. I've seen that, and I did enjoy that, although that was a while ago I saw that. That was quite some time ago. Have you heard the Big Finish Doctor Who and the Pirates audio drama? Nope, I have not heard that one. So, have no opinion. Do you know the channel Lily Simpson? Nope, I have never heard of it. Um, honestly, season 24 is much better than I thought. I honestly, McCoy's run in general is pretty solid. The the later two seasons granted more than the than the first one, but honestly, they're all they've all got good stuff. Do, do, do. Peter Cavaldi's birthday was this past Sunday. He turned sixty six. Man looks good for his age. Uh, the nineteen seventies of the Tomorrow People had such bad special effects. They reportedly asked some folks from Doctor Who for help. Wow! Wow! That's oh if you're if you're asking 70s era Doctor Who for special effects tips, oh boy. Do I know Verily Bitchy? I am familiar with, with her stuff. I haven't seen a ton of it, but I am familiar. What's your favorite movie from Disney's Dark Age? You're gonna have to give me a stretch of time because would the Dark Age be considered post 90s Renaissance? pre like tangled or are or are we talk talking like between when disney himself died and um little mermaid like i could see either one of those being argued as a dark age you gotta you gotta be more specific ever been rollerblading nope feel free to ignore them but as a joke i posted two questions that take you hours to respond to properly um i might have a private chuckle at them but yes i will be uh, not engaging with them, uh, 255. And thank you for understanding that. Uh, Rimmer lying to the others about how many fathoms the despair squid was from them was a bit too nice from him. Oh, it's been a while since I've watched those episodes of Red Dwarf. I'm trying to remember the specifics now. Why don't I like Jen from The Dark Crystal? Because he is boring. He looks boring. He acts boring. He's not helpful. He's not interesting. He's not endearing. He's annoying. Kira is way better as a protagonist. I have the first arc of the Tomorrow People on DVD. The special effects are that bad. Acting's pretty cheeseball too. Well, I mean, there still can be some value in that for some people. Hmm. 1970 to 1988. Oh, okay. Uh, Sailor Enchantix. So you're talking 
Um, after Disney Dine, before um, Little Mermaid. Um, Twilord, thank you very much for the super chat. I greatly appreciate it. You ever play tabletop RPGs? No need to read this. I've made a uh, Digimon one with an automated, uh, I don't know how to say that, C hashtag sheet. <laughs> Running a one shot for a Sonic podcast next month. Um, I mean, I'm I'm on a D and D uh, stream every two weeks. Quill and Sword, Partridge Quill on uh, Twitch, um, or if you look up Quill and Sword here on YouTube, you can watch the backlog. Um, yeah, so I mean, like I've been in a D and D campaign for a couple years now, um, and I've played Call of Cthulhu. I have played GURPS. I've played uh, the newer uh, Star Wars system. Um, yeah, I've, I've played a few things. I've played more D&D than anything else by a pretty heavy margin. Um, but I've played a few things. Uh, have I ever arm wrestled? I mean, yeah, when I was a kid and that kind of stuff didn't strike me as being really silly. Which McCoy stories have you not seen or reviewed? I think you've almost finished his era. So, so in terms of like never reviewed at all, it's Delta and the Bannerman, Ghost Light, and Survival. However, I'm I'm gonna have to redo. Excuse me, I'm gonna have to redo my uh, review of Curse of Fenric because there was like a six month stretch where I was reviewing the classic era stuff on the podcast feed, which isolates them from literally every other Doctor Who review I've done, and I think I just need to redo those. Um, so. Yeah. Is Quill and Sword available on Apple Podcasts asking for a friend? So far as I am aware, no. Um, but yeah, so I guess I've got four Seventh Doctor ones left to go. One of them's a redo um, of one that I, that a review technically exists. Um, I just started watching an anime about a character who thinks he's too old to pursue his dreams, then decides to give it another try. He's 27. Yeah, that's a very common thing in anime, uh, 255. They, their protagonists skew young and they have a tendency to treat as over the hill anyone over the age of 24. And I remember I mentioned this years ago in the, um, in the overview video I did about, uh, Cowboy Bebop. Damn it. I was afraid of this. Mm. Gonna have to pardon me. Ah. Oh. Gotta take that out because that was uh one of them was poking me just in the corner of the eye. And sometimes I can muscle through it for a while, but other times they're like, nope, that's just gonna keep bugging me. And I have to just ditch them. Um so I'll live. I hope that wasn't too unsettling to see people for people to see me peel off my my eyelashes. <laughs> Apologies. I feel like I should have given a content warning for that. Ah. Um but yeah, when I when I talked about Cowboy Bebop, I I sort of highlighted that. And like again, it's a very common anime problem. Um and like the problem is not that protagonists are young. That's not the problem. You can have young protagonists. It's fine. What's weird to me is when they give characters this wealth of background experience and expertise that they should not have been able to attain for how long they've been um, alive. Because, like, for, for example, um, Faye Valentine, I think, is a great example. Give... Uh, I don't want to get into spoilers, but given the specifics of her, for her to be any good at handling firearms and piloting a ship, especially for how young she is and how and the maximum amount of time she could have been learning how to do either of those things, she should not be any good at either. To say nothing of her sleight of hand and her card counting and all this other stuff. She's like 22. BS. And like they have the old man um of jet in that he's in his 30s but everything about him is coded minimum mid 40s if not 50s he's like he's got that retired cop energy and the dude's not even 
old enough to be retired. Like, it's a standard anime issue. And it's one of those things that I know you have to kind of get over a bit, but, like, it does bug me. I know it's a cultural thing, but what the heck? Is Beauty and the Beast really problematic? Haven't rewatched it in a long time. No. Like, the whole, oh, it's Stockholm Syndrome. No, it's not. No, it's not. And, like, the fact that he is a jerk to her at first is the point. So, <clears throat> I'm not saying that, like, there's no reason to find no fault in it. But no, it's not Stockholm Syndrome. Let's also know Stockholm Syndrome as a thing at all is largely debunked. So, bite me. I recently rewatched Blake Seven, still a great series. That one I've never seen. I was in a grocery store. The song I Want It That Way by the Backstreet Boys came on. And I immediately thought of you. I don't know how to feel about that. <sighs> I watched Delta and the Bannerman recently. Oh boy, no spoilers, but oh gods, oh dear. <laughs> Twilord, thank you very much for the super chat. Incredibly glad I asked. Gonna binge the heck out of that. Uh, any advice? Super nervous about doing a public one shot. C sharp is the programming language. Ah, uh, no, because I don't DM. <laughs> so I, I don't, I don't build these narratives. I don't DM. I don't. I am not a person to ask for advice for that. I play. I, I don't. I, I do not have the executive function to wrangle my brain enough to DM something or to even build. Uh, a one shot or really much of anything. I think the closest I could come is at a stretch. I could figure out how to adapt my own uh, fantasy setting of my novel into D and D. Um, but that's me taking something that I've already put a ton of thought into, and it just exists in my head rent free at this point. What are my thoughts on satire? I don't even know how to answer that. I like I. What? Uh, the Dark Age movies, Aristocats, Robin Hood, Rescuers, Fox and the Hound, Black Cauldron, Great Mouse Detective, Oliver and Company, Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Great Mouse Detective. There we go. Thank you, uh, Sailor en Enchantix, not only for reminding me of that uh, question, but giving me the list. I appreciate that. I kind of needed it. I kept forgetting. <laughs> um, yeah, Great Mouse Detective. Easy. Easy. Some of those are okay, though. Um, Robin Hood's fun. First Rescuers has some charm to it. Oliver and Company is, that, that, that's okay. Many of which is the Winnie the Pooh is sweet. It's harmless and sweet. Black Cauldron is just not much of anything. Aristocats is bleh. Um, and Fox and the Hound is fine. I'm here, but I'm in a mood, so you're forewarned. Well, I'm glad you're here, Meg, and... Um, I hope you feel better, and I hope that you do not um, get set off by anything I say. Uh, I wonder why you don't think Stockholm Syndrome is real. I said it's been largely debunked. That's not me thinking it isn't real. That's me telling you that the very notion has been largely debunked and is not um, taken into serious consideration by actual psychologists, psychiatrists, etc. So that's not an opinion. That's a fact. It was a notion created largely out of a bunch of sexist assumptions. Do you think something like the original Scooby-Doo could be considered classic because of the tropes it created and codified? Yeah, I would say. I mean, how do you how do you define classic is is its own minefield in the first place? Do you have any advice in terms of confidence, like starting your channel and coming out as LGBT? Confidence is something I'm still working on. Um, I don't because I have both the blessing and the burden of a massive ego. So I um I don't really, I don't really have advice because I haven't had a confidence issue because I am, like, I'm a performer by nature. I, I like attention. I like the stage. I like the spotlight. 
that's just kind of core to who I am. That's kind of always been true. So um, having the confidence to say out loud and go, hey, here I am, um, that's something I've just kind of always had. So I'm not a good person to ask for advice on how to build that if you don't have it. I know that you can. I, you know, I know people and I have friends who have built that kind of confidence with time, but that's just not what my experience is. I am... I'm a performer, an attention whore, and an exhibitionist. Like I, I don't, I, I came preloaded with the with the perks to to make it uh, relatively easy for me. Um, not that it's not that it's always the easiest thing, especially the coming out part. But you know, it's I I came in with advantages. What are your thoughts on satire? I should have made that a joke question. Could have been. I watched the 28-minute Bluey special. Uh, don't tell me about it, Ms. Wicked Wolf. I have not watched it yet. Black Cauldron source material was way, way better than the movie. I've heard that, Jason Thayer. And also, that would not be hard. Baloo is the best. Hashtag fight me. No, Baloo's great. Baloo's great. He's wonderful. He's adorable. <laughs> uh... Let's see. Black Cauldron will always hold a special place for me. It's one of my absolute favorite movies as a kid. And that's fair. That is fair. Like, I watched it uh, as an adult. And as an adult, what I mostly saw were the flaws. And if I'd watched it as a kid, I, I, might, have, I might have a very different experience of it. But, you know, I watched it as an adult. Uh, what's more, I watched it as an adult with a uh, rapidly refining critical eye, because I think by the time I watched it, I had um, at least started doing reviews on the channel. So like I was honing my critical faculties um, and those are hard to shut off once you, um, once you get them in place. I will fight for little John on a tree trunk with a big stick. Look, can we just be honest about the fact that Little John and Blue are effectively the same character? Like, really now. And I don't just mean because they have a very similar design and they're voiced by the same guy. Like, the the characters, it's like it's 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 the same dude. It's the same guy. Hold on, I'm just trying to get the glue off of my false lashes. There we go. Cool. <clears throat> Blue is a silver bear way cuter. <laughs> that works. You like attention very I wouldn't have never guessed. Mm -hmm. Cheeky. Which Taken is better, the Liam Neeson movie or the Spielberg-produced miniseries about alien abduction? I never saw the Spielberg-produced miniseries, uh, and the Liam Neeson movie was meh. Like, that phone call is the only scene worth rewatching. It's great, don't get me wrong, but what's your opinion on the Funimation Crunchyroll merger? I have not looked into it, Jason. My opinion on mergers in general is that they're bad, so I guess I'll default... I will... Defoit, default to that, barring any additional information. Would you ever go skydiving or sky surfing? Nope, probably not. <laughs> Discord, thank you, Carolyn. Let me get on that. Um, so I will be back in just a minute. I'm going to hop on the um, Council of Geeks Discord server and a reminder that that is a Patreon exclusive perk. Um, so let's see. What are some other shows and or movies that you that have moved you like episode five of X-Men 97 did? Uh, the third episode of um, uh, The Last of Us did. Um, I would say probably the third episode of Arcane um, had had a similar kind of impact on me. I was going to mention San Junipero from Black Mirror, except that one is is still way ahead of even these, which are fantastic. Um, but yeah, those are some examples. 
Now that the five things uh, about Star Wars has dropped, referring to an early, earlier one of my videos, why no love for mystical space knights with laser swords? Because the specifics of the Jedi are boring. They just are. The Jedi, the lore, the way that they are generally depicted is really boring. I find it deeply uninteresting. Uh, how much would a, wood, a woodpecker peck if a woodpecker could peck wood? Difficulty, say this as though you were Magneto. I don't have a Magneto voice to uh, offer up, so I don't. And I would say that a woodpecker would peck as much wood as a woodpecker would peck if a woodpecker would peck wood. What's your favorite summertime activity that you do fully clothed? Ah, damn it. Headed me off at the pass on that one. Um, Probably hiking. I, and I haven't done a ton of it in a while. I do really enjoy it, though, when I get to do it. Um, just being out in nature in general. And, like, hiking, not necessarily a mountain. Just get me out in the woods. Get me out in the woods. Um, and I suppose with clothes on. Look, just because I want to be out naked in the forest and summon... Uh, fairies in a mushroom circle look don't judge me all right would you like to see a tv show based on the dark side detective video games no i it's hard to it's hard to articulate why i don't think the humor would hit as well um in, in a tv show format I, I feel like the the meta nature of it and the silliness level of it just play better in a video game where like you have control of the pacing um, and you can you know skip through dialogue if you feel the need to if you're not here for the jokes because uh, you're in a mood or whatever like I don't know I, I feel like forcing it into a more rigid format is going to take some of the charm out of it. Canon head cannon or fanon? I have no use for fanon. Canon and headcanon are equally valid as far as I am concerned. Um, and I guess for clarification, when I say fan, and I mean like the uh, agreed upon fan decided this is how we will all agree. Like, I don't care what the agreement is. Um, are there any directors you would say have never directed a bad movie? For me, I'd say Jordan Peele and Denis Villeneuve. I have not seen all of Denis Villeneuve's movies, so I cannot judge that. Um, Jordan Peele, yes. I, I feel like someone who's only directed three movies, like three out of three, it's a strong track record, but I, I feel like until you get to five, um, it's, it's hard, it, it's... Like, I feel like that's the metric by which, like, okay, if you've made five movies and they're all good, um, you're solid. I would argue Guillermo del Toro, like, his weakest movie is uh, Mimic, which is still a lot of fun. It's still not bad. It is the worst movie he has made, but it's not bad. Um, so I, I, those, that, that's one that I would, that I would put up there. Uh, so far, no uh, new Who Masters era has overlapped with more than one of the Doctors. Um, would you like to? Would you like to continue seeing Doctor and Master incarnations paired off in this way? Would you prefer it if there was more overlap, like with the Anthony Ainley Master? I'd like them to at least try that, like having a hard cutoff for each incarnation of the Master. Um, that coincides with a certain incarnation of the Doctor, like, it's not wrong, but I, I'm kind of over that now. Like, John Sim, Master, is David Tennant's Master. And yes, I know he had his one appearance in Peter Capaldi, but that was clearly him intruding on another Master's era because that was Missy's era. And then we have Sasha Dewan, who is one of the best things about the Chibnall era overall. And... Yeah, I'd like to see New Who at least try carrying over a master for a bit, because um, they haven't yet. I'd like to. I'd like them to at least attempt it. Um, what would you say is the difference between death of the author and separating the artist from the art? Is it is it okay to use these terms interchangeably? I don't use them interchangeably, and not everyone uses these terms the same way that I use these terms. But here's why I do not use them interchangeably. 
because I very strongly believe in the death of the author, I do not believe in separating the artist from the art at all. And I will, ex I will explain as quickly as I can because this can literally be an entire video's worth of stuff. In fact, I've already kind of made videos about um, some of these topics. But short version, death of the author has to do with your experience of a story. Death of the author says that the author's intent and their interpretation of their work is no more valid than yours. If you experience a movie, book, whatever, if you take it in and what you experience, your uh, experience of it, what themes you see in it, what meaning you take from it, if you later find out that that is not at all what the author meant for you to take from it, that does not invalidate your, your take on the work. That is death of the author. Their intent is irrelevant to your experience. And I do believe in death of the author very strongly. I do not believe in separating the artist from the art because generally, and some people might quibble about this, but the way I see separate the artist from the art deployed basically amounts to don't, don't think about who made this. And, and it is almost always deployed as a reason why people will excuse their taking in of a piece of work and not grapple with the problems from a creator. Obviously, the big one in the age in which we live is J.K. Rowling. But, you know, there are certainly others. There's the uh, very deep-running racism of H.P. Lovecraft. There is the homophobia of Orson Scott Card. There is... The sex pestness of directors like Roman Polanski and Woody Allen. And people will say, look, I just take in what they make. I separate the artist from the art. And I don't use those inter interchangeably because they are not deployed in the same way. Death of the author has to do with your interpretation. Separating the artist from the art is sticking your head in the sand and willfully refusing to grapple with whose work it is you are engaging with. And I don't think that's healthy. And I also think it's disrespectful to the art because you're going to treat art as if it exists in a vacuum, as if it just was conjured by the cosmos and was not written by someone who injected their own ideas, their own notions, and drew on their own experiences. To treat it as if an author does not exist or an author is irrelevant to the very existence of the piece of art is disrespectful to the artist and to the art itself. And I do think that is different from not feeling like the artist's interpretation of the meaning of a work has to dictate your own. And that's death of the author, and that's separating the artist from the art. Hope that made sense. Uh, thoughts on outlawing smoking. The UK seems to be moving in that direction. I think outlawing smoking completely makes no sense. I think that level of prohibition is unhelpful. It's unhelpful for alcohol. It's unhelpful for... Um, for marijuana, it's unhelpful for tobacco. Now, you want to ban it in anywhere that is a public space. Not only am I okay with that, I support it. Uh, and any individual business should be allowed to ban it uh, as well. But like, if you can, go, in my opinion, you should be able to go home into your own space and light up a cigarette if you want one. I mean, please don't if you have kids or you have other people in the house who can't handle secondhand smoke, like go out into your yard or something. But, you know, banning it completely, outlawing it, no, that's a bad idea. That's a stupid idea. Prohibition uh, is not going to fix anything. It's going to cause more problems. All right. And I'm back. And what have I missed? A fair bit, most likely. One week past vaginoplasty and recovering at home now. Oh, congratulations, Louise. It's been rough, but so worth it. I've been watching you since before I even came out. Oh, wow. Oh, well, I hope that your um, recovery continues to go well. Um, and yes, I have heard from uh, more than a few people that that recovery from that is no joke. Um, it is not something that I will uh, ever uh, do. I... Well, I say ever like, I will be shocked if I ever have any surgeries, to be honest. Um, but if, if it is, 
if it is where you can be to be in a better place with yourself, I'm really happy for you. In Classic Who, Tony Ainsley served as the master from the last episode of Tom Baker through Peter Davison, Colin Baker, Sylvester McCoy, which was awesome. It was pretty cool. Unfortunately, I don't like... I, I He's one of my lower-ranked masters, to be honest. Um... But that is a that is a personal preference thing. But like just the fact that he stuck with it that long is cool. That is a neat thing that happened. Twilord back again with the super chat. I reject things from my lifetime as classic. Owl House's overt nods to Digimon, quarter century old impact on familiars made me feel older than Ida. Welcome to aging. So, eh. A thing I was reflecting recently, I have social anxiety, but I have no issues with nudity due to my upbringing. I'd be okay on a nude beach if I didn't have to talk to anyone else. Huh, it's an interesting perspective. I have yet to go to a nude beach, actually. There is one in Vermont. Uh, I keep meaning to go, but I haven't yet. I haven't been. Saw the trailer for Thelma the Unicorn. Never heard of it. Uh, the thing they're planning to do is to ban it for people born after 2009. So. It, okay, 255. I'm trying to parse that. So. Are you saying that they're banning it for people under the age of 25? Or like, if you were born born after 2009, then you will never be allowed to smoke no matter how old you get. Because I, I don't know if I'm parsing that correctly. Coyote Azul, thank you very much for the super chat. Have you seen either the Stallone, Judge Dredd, or Dredd with Carl Urban? Any thoughts on the character? I have seen both. Um, one, uh, the Stallone one is 90s cheese. And if you want some 90s cheese, it's a good one to put on for that. If you can stomach uh, Rob Schneider, who honestly, admittedly in that movie is not terrible. Um, despite the fact that he is a not great human being. Uh, <laughs> but um, like, if you're okay with 90s cheese, it's kind of fun. Uh, Dread with Carl Urban is great. That is a great, you know, compact, tight, brutal film. Like, that's just a good time. That's a good movie. I like it a lot. My thoughts on the character, Judge Dredd, a bit like the pun, he's kind of like the inverse of the Punisher. He's a character that when put in a, when put in the right story, I can enjoy very much. Definitely not a character who, who I think is good as any kind of role model or anything, but they can still be fascinating to watch. Like, I love the Punisher War Zone. I think that's a great movie too. And overall, these things with these, deplorable characters who I would never want to encounter anyone like that in real life, and I don't think anybody should be idolizing them. These are still really fascinating character, characters to watch when done well and put in the right scenarios. Anthony Ainley had a very substantial income, so all he wanted to do was appear in Doctor Who and play cricket. <laughs> Good on him! Uh, do you like the song Tis the Season by the Zombies? I don't know if I know it, Ms. Wicked Wolf. Been watching all the Pirates of the Caribbean movies during recovery. What are your thoughts on those films? First one, Stone Cold Classic. Perfect. Don't change a thing. I love it. Um, second one is okay. Has some fun moments. Third one is a lot better than people say it is. It's a little bloated, but I think it wraps up nicely. Fourth one was boring and didn't really work, and I didn't see the fifth one. Uh, Rob Schneider is not terrible. His best review, he'll be bugging you for an appearance. <laughs> no. Uh, I like Stallone cheese. Oscar is a favorite. Oscar is a fun movie. Although I realized recently that that is a um, John Landis joint, which I didn't realize, which was frustrating. I'm annoyed at how many movies I like that man directed. It's it's not fun for me to come to that realization. 
If you were born during or after 2009, you'd never be able to smoke. Like a 30-year-old in 2039 couldn't legally smoke, but a 31-year-old could. That, 255 AD, I, I try not to use the, this wording or this terminology if I can help it, but like that is really stupid. That is, that is inane. That is nonsensical. That is absurd. That, what? Oh my God. That, that is absolutely ridiculous. I would like to see a Dread sequel. So would I. Unfortunately, it didn't make nearly as much money as it needed to. And it didn't even have that big a budget. Like, it would be one thing if it was a big-ish budget movie and it didn't quite make its money back. Then they could have gone, well, let's trim it down. We'll have a tighter budget and we'll try again. It was already a pretty tight budget and it still didn't make it back. So, yeah. Did you watch Sequest DSV back in the early mid-90s? I think I saw like one episode of that. Or at least I saw the credits. I didn't, not really, for all intents and purposes. The great thing about Dread is he can be hero or villain, sometimes in the same story. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty accurate about the carrots. About the carrots? The character. I can talk. Uh, you love pirates, don't you? Yes. Pir Fictional pirates are a lot of fun are a lot of fun. They're just enjoyable. Supreme Omega. Thank you for the super chat. On modern superhero stuff with films and comics, does the stakes have to be raised so absurdly high? Isn't the appeal of low-key personal stakes better? Um, so, uh, overly high stakes is uh, a common problem um, with superhero storytelling. Basically, we have to literally save the world. And I'm not going to say that can never work. Got to go getting increasingly grumpy. Thank you for stopping in, Meg. I'm glad you did. Um, but uh, by and large, yes, low-key low key stakes are not inherently better than high stakes. The problem with most superhero media is that it does high stakes too much and they've devalued it. Because when you think of how many Marvel movies, just to pick on Marvel, and not to say that DC is better, and definitely in the comics they aren't, um, but just to pick on the movies for a bit, to how many Marvel movies have effectively planet-destroying stakes or bigger? It's like Thor the Dark World has that. Thor Ragnarok has that. The, the Thor Love and Thunder has that. All three Guardians of the Galaxies have that. Um, Avengers Age of Ultron has that. Arguably, the first Avengers has that. Infinity War has that. Endgame has that. Um, and it, it just keeps piling up. Now, lower stakes are not automatically better, but when you get into a stakes arms arms race, it's like, we're saving the world. And it's like, again? Really? Yeah, even when you go big scale, you have to retain a sense of the smaller scale stakes. Otherwise, it loses all meaning, which is why I actually think Infinity War and Endgame are really good, is because even as we have gotten to universe-spanning stakes, it keeps it grounded in the characters that we have come to know and love that it does still work because we understand the personal stakes for these people beyond just the abstract, we have to save the world. But yeah, there is a stakes arms race that happens in superhero media that is detrimental to storytelling. Stallone's been a bit of a dick to background artists in his latest television series. I hadn't heard that. That is a shame. I have not watched what he's been up to. I was recently diagnosed with Asperger's and my sister was absolutely shocked uh, that the doctor actually called it Asperger's. I had heard that that term has largely been retired, um, or at least there's been a movement away from it. So I'm not going to say I was shocked that it's called that. I was slightly surprised. Um, you do, Ms. Wicked Wolf. You do. <laughs> Would I ever visit the UK again? Um, probably only Scotland, uh, Mr. Zaki Boy. I don't think I would feel safe visiting the UK. And even Scotland is a stretch. Tell you what, Scotland goes independent. Soon as I can afford it, I will be there. But um, I do not feel safe traveling to the UK. 
I don't feel safe traveling to the UK for the same reason I don't feel safe traveling to the South in my own country. I don't feel safe going any further South than, uh, definitely any further South than Virginia. I just don't. I wouldn't feel safe doing it. I wouldn't feel safe going to the UK. So, no, uh, I have no plans. Uh, the logic is it's accommodating people who are currently addicted while preventing kids from being able to legally develop the habit. It's still ultimately just prohibition. It's stupid and it's not going to work, uh, 255. I can tell you that right now. Gummy bears or Swedish fish? Gummy bears, generally. Twilord, back again. I appreciate it. Um, last super chat, but be sen uh, to be sensible, but my 32 year old ass thought that media from well after my childhood, uh, being 10 to 20 years old was bad, but <laughs> that was worse. Uh, speaking of someone who turned 42, uh, less than a month ago, you're gonna have to make a shift. You're gonna have to, you'll get used to it. Uh... Please come to the UK. Aye. Scotland, maybe. Nowhere else. Definitely not England. Donald Trump visits Scotland often. Yeah, because he has a resort there. I don't think he'd go there otherwise. I've caught you live. Hi from the UK. Hello, Ellen. I'm actually going to be wrapping it up soon, but... I'm sorry you don't feel safe traveling to the UK. It really sucks. There are accepting people here in our country, but also a bunch of really nasty people. Yeah, same with the South. It's not... I I do not assume. I'm not assuming that everyone in the UK is transphobic. I'm not assuming that the governments in the UK or the loudest voices in the UK, like J.K. Rowling and, and others like her, are representative of everyone in the UK. I know they're not. But the problem is I cannot travel to a space like that, nor could I travel to the American South and have any confidence that any person who I encounter, talk with, or just am seen by isn't a massive transphobe. And you could make an argument like, well, technically that's true everywhere, that, you know, transphobes are everywhere. Yes, but the percentage and the degree to which they feel empowered to be openly hostile is higher in those areas. Where I live, I know there are people who don't like me, don't like who I am, don't like what they think I represent. I know that. I'm not a, I'm not a fool. But I also live in an area where I have not been shouted at in the street by people who don't like me. I live in an area where people who are bigoted against me do not feel empowered to act on that bigotry in my presence. What they think of me when they get home, that's between, that's between them and the fairies in the wall. But an area where the bigotry has been empowered has been encouraged and has been codified into laws and regulations to me says that someone who doesn't like me will feel safe in voicing that openly to my face and being confrontational with me. And I have no interest in traveling anywhere where I think bigots would feel empowered to harass me. I don't want to go there and I don't have to. <clears throat> Supreme Omega, coming in right at the tail end. On Loki Stakes. It's why I prefer high school era Buffy. Once the cast fights godlike beings, they feel less human and relatable to me. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Would you ever do meetups? I... Probably not. Um, if only because I think I don't think my ego could take it if I arranged for a meetup and nobody showed. 
because I've had stuff like that happen. Like I had a, I had a, a appearance for my book, um, my first book. So like a while back and like two people showed up and only one person who knew in advance I was going to be there. And one person just happened to be where I was and like sat down and asked me questions. And that was disheartening. So I think my disinclination to ever do a meetup just has to do with um, protecting my own ego and just very distinctly feeling like I, I don't, I don't want the blow if nobody shows up. <laughs> and uh, while I do have an ego, as I noted earlier, uh, it's not ironclad and I will do things to protect it. What are you worried about exactly if you travel to the UK or Florida? Like, are you worried they'll steal your hormones and imprison you or something? No, 255. I am worried that because of the laws and the things their leaders have said and done, that literally anyone who looks at me, clocks me as trans, which is very easy to do, will feel that they are. it is okay for them to shout at me, harass me, hassle me, or whatever else. No, I don't think they're going to imprison me. Although I won't go to Florida because it could literally be a case of I could be arrested for using the bathroom. Like I won't go to Florida for that, quite literally. Um, but by and large, no. It's not a case of like, I think I'm going to be thrown in the gulag. I just don't want to go somewhere where I know that the people who hate me believe that the law and the public and the authorities are on their side because those are people who will feel encouraged to harass me in some way. And I don't want to go to those places. Seeing Civil War tomorrow, probably going to be Garland's final film. I did hear about that, Rowan. I would like to see it. I don't know when, uh, when I'm going to do that, but I, I do like, I still haven't seen Men, but I've seen his other movies. You are, <laughs> you are special, you are valid, we all love you. Thank you, um, Knit and Crochet Tiger. It's also apathy from the masses that empowers bigots as well. There is also that, uh, Coyote Azul, there is absolutely, absolutely that. There's a cat cafe in Glasgow called Purple Cat Cafe. Cute. All right, I need to wrap it up. So... The up okay, so coming up tomorrow, I will be streaming on Twitch. I'm gonna try, I think I'm gonna try Oxen Free, which I haven't played before. So I'm gonna try that out on uh, on Twitch tomorrow on the Council of Geeks Twitch channel. I should also um, have a video in the break room tomorrow if I can get the edit done, which I should be able to. Um, and then Friday, I'll be on Twitch again. So Saturday's video is going to be one of two things. One of these is already filmed and edited. Another I shot today, and I kind of want to edit the one that I shot today to go up this coming Saturday. So I don't know which one it'll be, but it'll either be talking about um, adaptations of video games into um, TV shows and why it is so much more successful than movies, or it'll be about the current downward spiral that streaming services are going through and how their future does not look great. It'll be one of those two. And then whichever one it isn't will be next week on Saturday. So yeah, that's what's coming up. Oh, also Thursday, I will try and have a review of the latest episode of X-Men 97 out. And that should do it. Yep, that should do it. Uh, it's okay that you didn't get it initially, 255. Uh, it's, don't worry about it. You don't have to apologize for that. Um, you're amazing. Never forget that. Thank you, Sailor uh, Enchantix. I appreciate that. Thank you, uh, everybody, for joining me. I need some dinner because I was literally filming a video right up uh, until this stream was supposed to start. So I need some food. <sighs> and I hope... Uh, you all have a good rest of the day, a good rest of the week. I'm sure I'll see some of you, some of you tomorrow uh, on the stream. And please remember that you are beautiful, you are valid, and you are loved. You are the council, and I am just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.
McCavity!